That was good, guys. I, that was like a newer one. I haven't heard that one in a while, right? It, was that new? We've done that before? That, that was good. That was really very good. Well, good morning, everybody. Mm, it's good to be in the house of God. Okay? You get one more day. One more day a weekend before you got to go back. All right? Enjoy it. Sometimes I pray that clock moves slow. Let it move slow, Lord. <laughs> it don't work. Anyway, <laughs> praise God. You know, uh, everybody, I was um, reading, uh, uh, I do some reading once in a while, and uh, <laughs> I was reading a book the other day, and uh, it was a spiritual book, and uh, in the book that I was reading, they were referring to God or the higher power as Buddha. And uh, I know sometimes, you know, we like to, um, we, try, we try in our sophisticated culture not to offend everybody. You want to use proper names and terminologies and all that silliness. You're going to offend somebody someday, right? But, you know, some people like to use the word Buddha. Some people use God. You know, something generic where you don't offend anybody, you know. I know my Uncle Charlie, he preferred the word uh, Yeshua, <laughs> right? Uh, Yahweh. Uh, what are some of the names you hear? Sometimes you just hear the divine power or the greater power. You know, um, as we refer to the name of God, if it's okay with you guys, I, I, I do prefer the name Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, if you want to uh, refer to the supreme being, I still prefer Jesus Christ. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I, I'm offended when you say Buddha, so I'm going to say Jesus Christ, man. But ultimately, our eyes are upon God. You know, we believe in God. I think most people believe in God. Now, you can use your different names. My uncle used Sheshua. That's fine. I don't care what you really use, but we do prefer, I still personally prefer Jesus Christ, in case you're wondering. What about you, brother? You, you still prefer Jesus Christ? Yeah. And, um, you know, so I wanted to, that's what really inspired our, our conversation today. I wanted to talk about the name of Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, let's say the name. Let's say the name Christ. As a matter of fact, what was I listening to? I was listening to um, a radio program, and uh, they were advertising a business or whatever. But they just used the name Jesus Christ, not in a preachy, trying to save you kind of way, just in a thank you, Jesus. It was so refreshing, you know. Um, so let us, uh, let us maintain our standards, everybody. When you're out and about, sometimes somebody just needs to hear the name Jesus or Christ. That's okay. Yeah, that's the name that we use. And I do believe it's the family name. You know, when you look into your, your, your bulletin, you see the title of our conversation today. The title of, conversation, of our conversation is Jesus Christ. It's the family name. You know, we need a name that binds us all together sometimes, right? You know, back in, in, in the days of Jesus Christ, people didn't have last names. Um, the population was small. You didn't need last names. Jesus Christ himself was, um, some people believe that Jesus was his first name and Christ was his last name, but that's not true. They, they didn't have last names. Um, they were distinguished by their trade. They were distinguished by their town, uh, by who their father was. Jesus was called son of Joseph. He was called uh, the carpenter's son. Jesus was also known or better known as Jesus of Nazareth. We, we know that title pretty good, right? So that's how um, uh, we would distinguish back before, you know, the you know, population boom. We would distinguish by what town you're from, what your father's name was, what your trade was. But um, uh, as population increased upon the earth, there became a greater distinction uh, than, than these simple names. Like I couldn't just say John from Lehigh Acres because that really... It's like I know a thousand Johns in Lehigh Acres. So we had to become more distinguished, you know. Uh, we couldn't say uh, uh, John the, uh, you know, uh, mold remediation guy. <laughs> well, that, that does narrow it down, though, doesn't it? And then, and then these things would begin, it would begin to narrow it down. Um, but, uh, um, you know, it wasn't really until population boomed. Um, I've done some research. It, it was towards the 11th century, about a thousand years after Jesus Christ, where we began the three name system, you know. So most of us have three names, you know. Uh, most of us have three names. You have a first name, a middle name, and a last name, right? Um, before church today, I, was, I went around the, uh, and I, I was asking some, some of you folks what your middle name was because we have turned to the three name uh, 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 it's a three name culture. Although there's still some who have four names, five names, right? I know a, a lot of Latinos, they have like two last names, <laughs> right? So they got a first name, a middle name, and two last names. But it, the reason why is because the population became so great and we need a, a greater distinction. So now we have the three name system, which is, you know, for, for instance, we have 
Philip John Porzi, all right? Whenever you refer to in some kind of an official way or a medical way, they say your date of birth and name. And you give them your date of birth and you give them your name. Sometimes, like on your driver's license, they say, okay, and what's the middle name? It was needed because we had to distinguish who you were. Uh, and and I, I was interested by the research because it really wasn't until uh, like the wealthy barons in Europe where they began to use last names to distinguish who they were. They wanted to uh, distinguish themselves from the, uh, the masses. So uh, the, the, the wealthy barons would, would, would um, uh, develop last names and then they would be introduced not only with a first name, but they had a distinguished last name, you know. So now as the baron would enter the room, they would say, for example, I introduce to you, I'll use you for an example, Nicholas Keith Freeman. And the crowd would, oh. <laughs> and the last name not only became distinguishing, but it also became a source of pride, you know, like I am a Freeman, you know, of the house of Freeman. So it's interesting, isn't it? I, I just find it to be interesting. But as we refer to Jesus Christ, of course, you know, um, I'd like to say that there are names that distinguish us, as there should be, but we also share a family name, and that's why I, I reintroduce to us today the name Jesus Christ, because let it be the name that truly does and uh, bind us all together. I'd like to turn with you to a passage, uh, the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, and I would like to read, beginning with the 13th verse, in regard to names. And uh, when Jesus Christ walked the earth, they didn't have the three-name system. Jesus was known as um, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, son of Joseph, the carpenter's son. So we, we stumble across this in Matthew 16. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah or Elijah, the prophet. Once again, being referred to as what they did or where they came from. You're a Baptist. John was John the Baptist because he baptized people. That was his last name. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're, you're a prophet. And, 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 and that's how men would refer to each other. Some say you're a Baptist. Some say you're a prophet. But then down in, in, in verse 15, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said to him, what did he say? Go ahead, read it with me. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. You see, Simon discovered who he really was. He spent time with him. He wanted to know who he really was. I guess those who did not spend time with him when Jesus said, who do men say that, that I am? Like men in the neighborhood, they say, well, they, they call you son of Joseph. They call you a prophet. Uh, they call you a Baptist. They call you a carpenter. But, but he said to Simon, you, you hung, hung out with me. You know me better than anybody else. Who do you say that I am? And Simon, with, with absolute resolve, he says, I know who you are. He said, you ain't no Baptist, you ain't no prophet. And I would say of my brother Phil, and you sure ain't no carpenter. <laughs> if Pastor Phil were head to the room, I would introduce to him, I, I would, Phil, the seller of beverages, has entered the room. <laughs> Proceed, prestigious Roman. <laughs> but I, I just, you know, I want to, with humor, set the scene. <laughs> Some might say, you know, or, or they want to know, like people want to know you. So, so when, as people get to know you, they, they say like, well, where are you from? What do you do? As if that describes you. And I could say, hey, I'm, I'm Mike. I'm from Lehigh Acres and I'm a painter. And if, if you think you know me because you've heard those, you don't know me. You don't know me. But somehow we have to, we do our best to try to say, you, you can tell me what you do for a living. And some of us are proud of what we do for a living. Some of us, like, there's no real title for what I do. Can I create a fancy title? So we create Francis' title. Like Phil would say, like, you don't say seller of beverages. What do you say? Because <laughs> that's, that's not a fancy title. But you would probably create something that makes you seem more important. <laughs> <laughs> it 
<laughs> yeah, that don't help. But anyway, <laughs> interesting. I find it interesting. And that's why the barons back in, you know, 1000, you know, they wanted to be uh, distinguished and they wanted to be prestigious. So they would um, give their last names and I am of the house of and declare who they were and take pride in it. It's not necessarily in a bad way, just in a human way, right? But um, you see, Simon was able to say of Jesus, he was able to say, I know you're not a carpenter's son. And I know you're not just Jesus of Nazareth. I know who you are. Man, I know who you really are. Before you became wrapped in flesh and after you leave this wrapping of flesh, he says very simply, you are the Christ. Who, who, who do men say that I, son of man, am? And, 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 and Peter said, you are the son of God. Not the son of man, but the son of God. And uh, Peter knew that because he spent time with him. Amen, everybody. He wanted to know him. He wanted to discover who he was. What I find interesting is the next, well, one of the next verses, verse 20. Uh, here, I guess we're in Matthew 16. It says that after Simon disclosed this to him, you know, um, um, Jesus said, then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ, right? Now, usually when I, when I hear or read things like that, I'm always intrigued by it, you know? Like, like why wouldn't he want anyone to declare who he was? Like, well, like when Jesus healed the blind man, he, 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 he told the blind man, don't tell anybody what I did. You know, like he always wanted to be like in disguise, right? Like, um, you know, wrapped in flesh, God wrapped in flesh. I am all of the power of the universe wrapped inside this flesh. And unless you take a moment to figure it out, you'll never know. And I think that's how Jesus was, was, was explaining himself to the disciples. Don't tell them who I am. They want to know who I am. Let them come and discover who I am. Amen. Don't you feel like that sometimes? Like sometimes I'm having like casual conversation with folks. I know they're really not listening. So I don't just... Um, they really don't want to listen to me, so I don't disclose myself to them. Like, I know you're just whatever. Don't you understand what I'm saying, right? Like, I'm not going to tell anybody my heart if you don't want it. I'm not going to, like, I, I consider my heart to be precious. If you don't, you can't have it. Amen? Yeah. Right. And if you'd like to invest, then I'll disclose. But if not, then I'll remain Michael of Lehi, the painter of houses. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. so with it there's um it's always um like a, a quest a um an allurement to look for more there's so much more of god there's so much more of life you know you can't have more life unless you have more god i know you want the fullness of life you guys want good things you want good lives right you can't get it until you discover god until you discover Jesus. If you pursue God, if you pursue the creator of the universe, then you will discover the greater life that you're looking for. Amen. And that's why Jesus says, now nah, let me stay in disguise. Don't tell them who I am. Don't tell them who I am. Like they could go to Jesus and they can get all of their questions answered. They could heal all of their hurts. But Jesus says, don't tell them if they don't want it. If they consider it of no value. Isn't that beautiful and interesting at the same time? I think it is. So, so here in this passage, I, I, I think it, 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 speaks, it speaks volumes, of course. You know, Jesus was in disguise. He was wrapped in flesh. And I would say, I would say that's true of each of us too, though. I would say that's true of each of us. I know we're so tempted to say, and we, 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 we um, press each other in regard to that. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Because, we all, because I think we, 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 we're moved by superficials. Like, tell me where you live. Sometimes you ask somebody where they live because you want to find out what their status is. You know, like, where do you live? You live in Lehigh? Okay, okay. Well, you know me because I live in Lehigh? I didn't tell you I live in the states. I didn't live in Heritage Palm Estates or for Heritage Palm Boulevard, whatever it's the illustrious name I could give. I live in the mansions of Heritage. And oh, now I know you. Oh, 
You don't know me. But we live there. You know you live there. And, and, and sometimes like, oh, yeah, what, what, what kind of car do you drive? <laughs> oh, they drive a BMW. Woo! <laughs> a BMW. I want to get to know them. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're just lowered to the externals. Because if I tell you I'm Mike of Lehigh and I drive a piece of junk Chevrolet, I will not allure. Who can I ride in that? Yeah, I'll let you drive it. <laughs> we are so shallow and superficial. We know nothing. Nothing. And Jesus, I love this house and what this house gives to us. It invites us into something deeper and truer and realer. Amen. It sets us free. It brings us into truth itself. Right. Jesus was the most valuable thing upon the earth. And he said, who do men say that I am? Some just walk right by you. They don't want to know you because they think you have nothing to offer them. Huh. Something, huh? Yeah, let that truth speak to us as we encounter each other throughout the course of life. If you really want to know who somebody is, don't ask them where they live. Don't ask them what they do for a living, because that won't define them. Don't ask them. If you really want to know them, just spend some time with them. Ask them some real questions, perhaps. Or maybe the biggest thing, which is so elusive to most of us, Listen to them. Listen. Listen between the lines, between the words that are spoken. Amen, everybody? You know, we do reveal ourselves, but it's, it's fast and it's quick. And sometimes we're not quick listeners. We're quick speakers, but we're not quick li li listeners. Have you ever discovered that when you're having a conversation with somebody? Like I said, blah, 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 blah. And then you said, I think they said something in the midst of that. Right? Do you ever, do you ever do that? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Praise God, everybody. Praise God. So here, let's go back to our passage for a second. So let's go to uh, verse 17. It says that Jesus answered and said him, he said, he said to Jesus was, was, was going to reply to Simon. He said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. And there you go. There's the like the uh, how they would refer to each other. Simon, which is his name. Bar means son of. So so he was son of Jonah. He was referred to as Simon. You're the son of Jonah. But his, his last name, they didn't have last names back then. But he said to him, he said, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Amen, everybody. This is nothing natural about him, man. There's something spiritual about us all. And if you want to stay superficial, we'll never know who we really are, everybody. He says, you will not discover this in the natural world. You will not discover this in the natural uh, aesthetics of life. You'll have to go just a little bit deeper. And that's why, that's why the Lord blessed him and said, you're blessed because this was not revealed to you by the car that I drive and the house that I live in. You did not discover this by my trade or who my family was. You discovered this because you really wanted to know God and truth and life. Right, everybody? because you pass the superficial to look for something deeper in life than your jobs and your money and your houses and your empty pursuits. You just wanted something a little bit more and you were willing to pay the price for it. You're willing to lay down your life to discover true life. But sometimes we're just not, man. Sometimes we're not. We want our empty lives because we think, I don't know what we think, we're deluded. <laughs> But Jesus said to Peter, he says, you're blessed because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. You know there's something greater in life and you're willing to let go of the externals to grab onto something that's real. And I know we all want it. He said, um, and I also say to you, Peter, he says, on this rock, because here he changes his name. He says, you will no longer be known as Simon. Jesus now says to Peter, like he reverses the role, he says, everybody says that you're Simon, and Jesus says, no, you're not Simon. He says, men would say that you're Simon, Jesus says, I say that you're Peter, a rock. He says, I know who you really are. You are not Simon, son of Jodah. He says, you're Peter. You're a rock. I know who you are. Let me tell you who you are now, Peter. How about that? How about that exchange? 
He says, no, 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 no. You are not who men say that you are. He said that you are not who men say that you are. Men say that you are John, Phil, Chris of Lehi. You do this and that. Jesus says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're Peter. And not only with that, he tells them what your name means. He says, you're a rock. And he says, I'm going to build my church on you. Well, that sounds pretty important. <laughs> but he doesn't even stop there. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. If I'm Peter, it's like, I am not worthy of that name. That is not who I am. I'm Peter, the fisherman, the rough guy. I got some foul language and some foul habits. That's who I am. Ask anybody. They'll tell you. Right? You want to ask me? I'll tell you who I am. I'm a foul mouthed, dirty individual. I fish. I'm tough. And that's about who I am. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No. You don't even know who you are. And sometimes you believe what everybody else says and what your circumstance says. You believe who you are based upon what you do and based upon what you have. You believe the own lie, your own lie. No, you're not. No, you're not, Peter. No, you're not. Whew. No, you're not. I'm going to build my church on you. And he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail Amen. against it. And he said, He's not even done yet. Oh, my goodness. There's a discourse here. He goes on to say, let me tell you who you are. Man, there's a full discovery of who you are, guys. He says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You're going to give me the keys of the kingdom of heaven? I can't even get to the keys to a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I got the keys to a Fiat. You know what Fiat stands for, right? Fix it again, Tony. <laughs> That's what I had growing up, a fiat. <laughs> and Jesus says, no, 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 you're not the owner of a fiat. He says, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You have more power. You have more power than you know. You have more authority. I don't care what small title your small boss gives you at work, please. And then you wear that because you believe the lie. Please. Jesus says, can I give you a badge? Can I give you a name? Can I give you some keys? He says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever, what does that mean? He says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in the heavens. My God. Why am I wasting my time with all these lesser things? Why are you chasing after what is nothing? Why do you let define you what is less than who you are? I mean, go ahead and do what you got to do. I still got to paint the house tomorrow, right? We still got to paint houses tomorrow. I'll still, still be Michael of Lehi that paints houses. But, you know, I, I got, are you going to do what you'll do tomorrow? But know who you really are. And know the difference that you make in this world and know the greatest title that you have and the influence you have. It's the people all around you. Like, I might be painting your house, but I know that there's a soul inside that house that needs some keys, needs some kingdom, needs some God. Uh-huh. And the greatest transaction that you will have is not your little paycheck at the end, because you know it's little, right? <laughs> your little paycheck. But the greatest transaction you will have is to save souls. Uh-huh. I think that God will take care of our material needs. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to chase it. You're going to have what you're going to have in this life. I don't believe you work hard and you get this. I'm not a believer in that. I'm, I believe in providence. I believe you get what God wants you to have. That's all. You get what God and when he wants you to have it. I think you'll be poor in this life and you'll be rich in this life. <laughs> I'll take that as a last of agreement from my brother. <laughs> you know? Sometimes in business, you know, you, you, all of a sudden business is good. Oh, you're a good businessman. I'm not a good businessman. Listen, um, uh, as, my, as my, my family would call me, what, they, what does my family call me? They call me procrastinator. <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. I only have what I have by the grace of God. I know real hardworking people that, that, that have been poor their whole lives, and every, right? So don't tell me you work hard and you get and not to mention, you know, while I'm ranting, you know, we call, we call things blessings that aren't the blessing. The blessing is life. And until you know that, you're going to describe everything else as the blessing. 
and really believe it. Even as a good Christian, you think money is the blessing. Even as a good Christian, you think money is the blessing. We're lost in darkness, man. We're lost in darkness. Every time we get a dollar, I've been blessed. We don't know what the heck we're talking about. <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about. Blessing is life. It's, it's, it's the keys of the kingdom. It's, it's, we, we, and we don't even know these simple, basic truths. We don't know them. We don't believe them. We don't even want them. And the house was quiet. <laughs> Whatever. And that's why Jesus said, don't tell anybody who I am. I'm going to stay in disguise. Jesus can stay in disguise in your life, your whole life, man. He can just be your Sunday morning God. He can be your God when you need a God. Uh -huh. <sighs> or he can be life itself and everything that pertains to life. And then you can think of everything else in this life as small and insignificant. You know, when I was a younger man, and your response would be, you're young now, Pastor. But anyway, when I was a younger man, <laughs> and I was just starting out in business, I would get up in the morning and I would pray. And then I knew it was time to go to work, so... I would say, God, I'll be right back. I got to go do this. I'll be right back. And I went to work. And then at the end of the day, I said, okay, God, where were we? And sometime as an older man, I said, what happened to that? What happened to that? I got to get that back again. I got to get that back again. Hmm. Right? I believe Jesus in, is in disguise and he lets himself be. Isn't that beautiful? He, he won't force himself. On. And you know, even when he is in disguise in your life, because I believe that mostly your God is in disguise in your life and you don't know it. I believe he's your boss. Some of you say, you don't know my boss. He's not my boss, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I believe sometimes God is your boss who has mercy on you, who gives you a job. I think God is in disguise in the person next to you. I think God is in disguise in the one who walks by you. I think God is in disguise as anyone who gives you mercy and love and kindness. If you don't want to chase him and discover him, then he'll stay in disguise, but he's still going to bless you. And he's still going to love you. You just won't know him. You don't know John and Jim and Sally and Jane but you won't know that it's always God. So you might spend your whole life looking for John and Jim and boss and this, not knowing it's been Jesus all along. He just wrapped himself in all kinds of flesh. He just stayed in disguise. Amen, everybody. Amen. Hmm. Our God is vast. He's deep. He's a mystery, if you will. But you see, you will never know who you truly are, I would say. You see, Jesus didn't tell Peter who he was until Peter first discovered who Jesus was. And then, amen, everybody. So, so when, when Peter says, I know who you are, then Jesus says, now let me tell you who you are. You see, you will never know who you truly and fully are until you know, ha, I guess until you know the family name, until you know, until you know what, what family you're of, you know. So when you enter a room, no one has to say, or you don't even say of yourself, uh, you know, I'm, my, my name is this, I live here and I do this. My greatest title in life and your greatest title in life, let me tell you what your greatest title is. I'm a child of God. Amen. I am of the kingdom of heaven, in case you're wondering what my address is. <laughs> you can have fun with that, but you probably won't. But where do you live and where are you from? I'm from the kingdom of heaven. It's my address. God is my father. If, I, if, I, if someone ever asked me and I, and I start, or if you started there, I bet you, first of all, they'd have a greater discovery of who you really are, right? Because if you say, I live in Fort Myers, okay, but if you say, I'm from the kingdom of heaven, they're going to awaken something. Wait a second. And who's your father again? God. 
wait a second, you're trying to say something to me. <laughs> but isn't it the truth, everybody? You will never know who you fully are until you know who, who God is. And, and I, I, think, I think God wants to bring us back to this real simple truth, everybody. Okay, let's try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. He wants to bring us back to our family name. Because that's who you are. Bring it back to your family name. You want to know who you are in this life because we get lost? Remember the family name. Christ is the family name, everybody. Christ is the family name. Like, like Christ was not Jesus' last name, right? But you know, we kind of think it is. Well, well Christ is all, it's, it's the family name. You know, Christ, we call ourselves Christians, right? Christ ones, right? It's the family name. Who are you? Declare your name. You're the anointed one. You're a son and a, and a daughter of God. Remember your family name and, and it'll bring you into a greater life, a greater understanding. You know, here in Acts 4, it says real simple. I, I looked up a passage here in Acts 4. It says, it says that, that verse 12, it says, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind. Who is it given to everybody? Mankind, see, the family name is given to everybody. There's no other name, there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which man must be saved. The greatest name that's ever been given to you, everybody, it, it, it's Christ. And it's been given to us all. So when the barons back in the day would enter the room and they would declare their first and their last name and they would think who they are based upon their name, know who you are based upon your name. You're a child of God. Know that, man. Know that when you enter the realm called life. Know that you're a child of God. Know, 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 know the family name. First of all, let it bind us together. Let us know that we are equal. Whatever, whatever that equality is, sometimes we're equal in our poverty, everybody. Amen? That's okay. Sometimes we're equal in our riches. Sometimes we're equal in our weaknesses. And we're equal in our strength. Amen? I mean, sometimes we're equal in our wisdom. We're all pretty smart in here. But sometimes we're all pretty, pretty foolish, too. And we're, we're equal even in the foolish things we do in life. We're equal. I act like a fool as much as you do, Bear. I tell you. <laughs> How dare you use my name in there? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you and I, we're both the wise men in the room, right? <laughs> Is, aren't we equal in that regard? Of course, as human beings, we're all equal. We're all great and we're all silly. Right? But, but, but I, I love it. It's, it's the name that binds us all together. We're sons and, and, and we're daughters of God. There's been a name that's been given to us that is greater than any name. There's no other name greater. The greatest name. What, what is, what's, what's some of the passages? There's no, there, there is no name that's greater than the name of Jesus. And whatever family name you think you have, whatever job you think you have, wherever you think you live and what you think you drive in, there's no other name that is greater than the name. There's no greater name under heaven, above heaven, than the name of Jesus Christ. And that's your name. You're part of the family. That's, that, 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 that's part of your heritage and your greatness, everybody. That's it. Hmm. I believe this to be true. I believe that we will never know who we fully are until we discover who God is. I, will, I believe we'll never know who we truly are until we know who God is and who we are in him. Let me encourage you with this. I am, I'm going to close, make it a short one. But let me encourage you with this. Because, you know, these Sundays, they come and go real quick. And, you, and, you know, Mondays come. And we all talk about, and oh my God, I'll tell you what defines you in life, everybody. What defines you in life? I bet you all week long you don't talk about what happened in church on Sunday. I bet you. Don't answer me, because it's insulting. <laughs> you insult me. <laughs> Some of us don't, don't make it past the parking lot, man. We don't. What happened on Sunday? What was said on Sunday? I don't know. It's okay by the way, because the word of God changes you, whether you remember a word or not, it makes no difference. You're still, the power of God is still strong enough to save your soul, even though you don't remember a word that was spoken. But find this to be interesting. What do you talk about all week long? Your jobs, your money. Your bills. I don't know. 
the house that you're getting ready to buy, the car that you want. Hopefully you're thinking about what color you want to paint your house, you give me a call. <laughs> we can help with that. <laughs> but I bet you the smaller part of the conversation is who we really are. And, and we press on in regard to things that are not, forgetting the things that truly are. So if we're not bold enough to have these conversations with others just yet, I pray that God first give you the boldness to have that conversation with yourself at least. Amen. At least be true to yourself. In the morning or at night or when you're driving, at least be true to yourself, okay? I know who I am. I'm a child of God. And I know I'm born with purpose. And I know what I do is not who I am. I'll know I'll go to work and I'll do this, but it doesn't define me. I know I'm born for greater purpose, and my purpose is not just to have a nice house. My purpose is not to have a nice bank account. My purpose is greater than that. Because there's something larger than it all called life. And I know the great, and, and this is the conversation you have with yourself. I know I'm supposed to touch somebody today. I know I'm supposed to stop somebody in their tracks. I know I'm supposed to hear what somebody's whispering in between what they're really shouting. I know there's a whisper in between the shout. I know I'm supposed to touch someone. I know, as Peter would say, that my name is Peter and I'm a rock and I know that God's going to build things and, and I'm going to set people free and I'm going to show forth the kingdom of God. You don't show forth the kingdom of God by saying, do you know Jesus? Sometimes it's the most insulting, disgusting question. I say, you don't know Jesus. You find who he is first. <laughs> Based upon your life, you don't know him either. Don't ask me, do I know who Jesus is? Don't ask me that silly question. Why don't you just be Jesus? Instead of forcing your religion on me. Why don't you be love? Why don't you be mercy? Why don't you be life? Why don't you be your friend? Give somebody laughter. Take somebody out of their, their pain for a minute. Amen, everybody. Amen. Good. I say the first person that you be honest with is yourself. Declare your name and where you're from and your identity, all right, amen. My prayer for you today, I pray that you will fully discover who you truly are. And I pray that you will live from that place, amen. And as Jesus said to Peter, for I give you the keys of the kingdom. Jesus himself would say to you, as you sit here in your chairs, he says it to me and I accept it, I think I do. And he says it to you, do you accept it? Do you accept it? He says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Do you accept that? Give me an encouraging yes, somebody. Somebody, anybody want them? Otherwise, I got all these keys. I'm like Schneider here. Does anybody want some of these keys? Got a pocket full of keys. Anybody want some keys? You want some keys? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. I want a key to, don't tell me a BMW. Don't tell me that nice house on the corner I've been looking at. Don't tell me the manager's office with a nice plaque on the wall. What key do you want? What key do you want? What key do you want? You want the key to the bigger office? The better house? What key are you looking for? The key to the better car? The key, what, key, what key do you want? Because Jesus says, I got a whole bunch of keys and nobody wants them. They're chasing all these other keys. I got the keys, man. And he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. You have all power of heaven and earth. That's extraordinary. Sometimes we live from that place. I give you the keys. You can bind heaven and earth. He says, he says you can storm the gates of hell. That's not, that's not defensive. That's offensive. You can storm the gates of hell. And the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For flesh and blood 
will not reveal this to you, but this will be revealed to you by the Spirit of God. Amen, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise and worship team. Why don't you come forward? Amen. All right. Why don't we all stand and worship God for a minute? God bless you, everybody. Amen. Amen. Powerful name of Jesus. You know, as uh, you were preaching, Pastor, I was reminded of uh, the gatekeepers in the Old Testament. They had the keys and they had to open up the gate. And uh, Eliakim was given the key, but he wasn't the original gatekeeper. Dumas was the original gatekeeper, but God took the key from him because he would be silent. He wouldn't speak and he would pick and choose who he was going to open the door for. He's like, you can't be my gatekeeper. So he took the key from him and gave it to Eliakim because Eliakim would only speak righteously and he would open the door to all. And that's the gatekeeper. You have the power to open those keys, but you do have to speak. <laughs> you can't just sit there in silence and you can't pick and choose who you're going to let through the door. But if you'll speak righteously and you feel open the doors, you can be a gatekeeper. You know, David prayed the prayer. He said he wouldn't be satisfied until he awaked with the likeness of God. The truth is we won't be satisfied until we awake with his likeness. No matter what we think is going to satisfy us, the only thing that can satisfy us is God. We have to awake with his likeness, which means you probably have to know what he's like. And it's what Pastor Mike just said. If we'll search him out and want to know more of him and get more of him, and he'll give it to us, church. He will give it to us. And then I do believe we can be satisfied. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are grateful this morning, Lord. Uh, grateful as always because uh, we get to come into your house, Lord, and we get to worship you, Lord God. Uh, we pray, Lord, this morning that you would renew our strength, Lord, and renew our faith, Lord God, and that we would declare the name Jesus Christ because there is no other foundation, Lord. There's nothing else that we can stand on except for your name and your name alone, which is given from heaven, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, this day, Lord, for declaring who we are, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the keys to the kingdom, Lord. And we pray, Lord, this week that we would speak righteously and we would open doors, Lord God. Invite others to come and know who they are, that they are from the same name, Jesus Christ. So we thank you for the day, Lord, for this family, Lord. We pray your blessings on all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.